Hi, my name is Bjergsen from Team Solo Mid, and this is my basic champion's guide to Azir. Azir in solo queue can be really hit or miss because he's kind of reliant on your team to help you start the fights. If you stream in, you're kind of just suiciding, but if your team can start the fight, Azir can be a ridiculous hyper carry that can just carry team fights 1v5, especially late game. So in terms of, he pretty much always has a win condition in solo queue. You can always come back just because his scaling is so good and you can always be powerful throughout the game. His landing phase is also really strong, but it is kind of hard to force kills either in your lane or on the map. The only way you can really do it is with the streamer shuffle, but again, it, it puts you in a risk. And if they have flash up, it's still really hard to get it. Azir's landing is really powerful. Azir's landing is highly based on just getting the 1v1 and not getting ganked. He can push out almost any lane uh, with his soldiers by just slamming the minions and trading if he ever comes up and shows his face. So the main thing you really want to watch out for is as you're pushing and as you're trading aggressively, uh, you are very vulnerable to getting ganked. As soon as you use your Q, your escape is uh, cut down to a really short range. That's when they're going to try to gank you. In terms of trades, he can beat almost any champion in trades. Um, especially in the early parts, as he level 2 is really strong. And there's a lot of just instant trade potential from the level 2 right away. In terms of all-ins, the only way you can really all-in someone is with the streamer shuffle. And that's also really the only way you can set up a gank. Um, it's really useful to put a soldier in the middle of the lane and potentially start hitting the minions. And then as they come up, you can look for the streamer shuffle. But Azir is more about just pushing in your opponent, forcing him to farm on tower, uh, looking to take his tower or just take a lot of control over the lane and getting a lot of farm and playing off your power spikes. You don't necessarily need to be constantly forcing these all-ins in lane or forcing these ganks. That's not necessarily Azir's playstyle. But he's really good at always having the push in lane and pressuring the map by having the push. Azir's team fighting takes a lot of games because he can work as just a complete backliner and just hit the nearest target and do a ton of damage. Or you can go in with stream and shuffle and just get that perfect setup for your team and win the team fight that way. Um, so it's really just about understanding when you just want to be taking these long fights and just doing a ton of damage and looking for the shuffle at a later point or just using ult to peel for yourself. Uh, but generally, as a beginning, you want to be standing behind your tanks uh, with your support or have a melee support peeling for you and you just want to be playing it kind of like an AD carry drop by your soldiers and do as much damage to whoever walks in your range whether it be a tank or a carry um, and you want to just play it really safe and calculated and you want to be constantly looking for opportunities to get this room a shuffle but it's kind of hard for me to explain exactly which case it's generally if you can get it on multiple people or a key target that your team can follow up and kill afterwards or if you have a Zonya and you can stay alive afterwards it's just about trial and error and playing a lot of team fights that and eventually you'll be able to judge whether you want to be playing the backliner or assist your team with the engage for runes i go ap quince hp scaling yellows cdr scaling blues and attack speed reds the attack speed reds benefit azir a lot for his early push and just his overall damage in team fights because they mostly come from the auto attacks from his soldiers you can also run magic pen which players like febivin and faker do you can try both attack speed and magic pen and see what fits you best for the Masteries, I like to run 12 18 0. Um, I choose to go Savagery over Wanderer just for the CSing when, you're not, when you don't have your soldiers. It's mostly for the early game or when you don't have blue buff. You don't want to always rely on your soldiers to net you CS. And I feel like that extra like 5 damage just often is the difference between getting a CS or losing it. Whereas the uh, slightly more movement speed out of combat is nice. But um, sometimes I, I'd probably say I get like 10, 10 more CS in a game just by having Savagery. I go Merciless over Meditation just because I usually get blue buff a lot uh, in solo queue or if I'm not getting blue buff I compensate by buying two Doran's rings and just conserving my mana at the right time. I think Merciless just increases your damage by a lot and I don't like to give it up for just some mana. Um, overall everything else is pretty standard. Thunderlord's Decree works really well with this here once he starts to get some attack speed. Azir's skill order is pretty standard. You always want to go W at level 1, Q at level 2. I personally like to always go E at level 3 because the Q increases by 20 damage on the next rank. So being able to have that escape in case I get ganked or jumped on versus having 20 extra damage from my next trade, I just prefer the safety. Overall, you always want to be maxing Q into W into E and getting your ult whenever possible. Getting the W max second is really helpful for just having more soldiers, which is Azir's main damage output. For Azir's item build, you always want to start Doran's ring. Azir has really strong early leading and early trades, so you don't want to go for something that's slightly weaker like Corruption Potion. Um, generally, you want to start building towards Stinger and Nash's 2 as your first item. 
in some cases, like against Zed, you would want to build Seekers for the later Zhonyas, and against a champion like LeBlanc, you would want to build Abyssal as your first item. So against uh, really hard matchups or Assassins, it's okay to start building towards a Resistance item first and get Nashers later. But the standard build is Nashers into either... After Nashers, you want to complete your Sorcerer Shoes and then build either Abyssal or Rylice, followed up by either the other or a Deathcap, Zhonyas, Void, uh, any kind of these damage items. But um, your really strong core would be Nashers, Rylice, Void, or Nashers, Abyssal, Rylice. Thanks for watching this basic champion guide. Make sure to check out the rest of the guides at lawclass.com.